Okay, so um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, the program started almost 18 years ago. I mean, the planning started in back in 2003. We at an alum of our college, uh, Dr. Kendall Kendall, who gave a generous gift to um, to you know that to, that enabled us to start the program, and the program was launched in 2004. So the very first group of students graduated in 2006, and over the years we have continuously innovated the curriculum. And as of spring of 2021. Uh, you know, in particularly with the the impositions of the pandemic, we transitioned the entire program to the distance learning or the e-learning mode. And this last summer, we graduated the 16th group uh, of students. Overall, we have graduated more than 150 students, close to 250 to 300 students uh, have actually taken one or more classes. So the contribution uh, I think has been quite significant. At the time of the launch, our, our, our goal was actually to really uh, offer a sort of a comprehensive uh, and a formal opportunity for uh, for fully employed professionals to actually come back into the academics and learn uh, about drug development. And to that extent, we wanted to bring real life examples to to the students so therefore we actually had this idea that we should be able to not just utilize our own the college of pharmacy college of medicine all the clinical trials experts who are uh, within the university of cincinnati academic health center which has many many areas of uh, expertise uh, and and global recognition but not only academics but also really blend that with uh, expertise from industry people who do this on a day to day basis um, and as well as the regulatory bodies, agencies like the US uh, FDA and uh, in fact the global regulatory agencies. Uh, as it is probably well appreciated that it may take it upwards of a, a billion dollars. So the estimates range from 800 millions to, to about $2 billion. That's the cost of developing a new drug molecule. And as was emphasized quite significantly with the development of therapeutics and vaccines for the COVID-19. It's a large multidisciplinary global effort. And with the current emphasis on the development of larger biological or biotherapeutics, such as the monoclonal antibodies and the vaccines, uh, really the effort for new drug development uh, has evolved and continues to evolve uh, and then become better and better in terms of getting closer towards uh, you know the unmet needs the, the targets that are uh, that are, that present an opportunity for us to go after diseases that have not yet been conquered so as we go through the conversation today you will hear from experts who do a lot of the target identification and developing drugs to new targets, whether these are small molecules or whether they are large molecules. So we have amongst us Dr. Sibyl, who is going to be talking about small molecules that uh, the quote unquote conventional drug molecules that target, uh, you know, as I've said, uh, unconquered diseases. Dr. Shelley will be talking about larger therapeutics, the biotherapeutics such as the antibodies, the proteins, and other types of uh, very novel therapeutics. Once you discover the compounds, it goes through a process of lead optimization, doing a lot of preclinical animal studies, which is where my expertise comes in, along with that of Dr. Schwen. Uh, we try to identify compounds that are compounds with very high degree of liability and try to eliminate them as soon as possible. And really then pass it on to individuals like Dr. Bapert, who can tell us whether we can actually make a formulation from that or not. And, and so he goes into uh, deeper into, into his courses about what kinds of formulations from simple <clears throat> intravenous to multiple or um, uh, complex uh, sustained release formulations uh, that, that may, be, uh, may be required. And so all of those courses in the first year of the curriculum actually prepare the students to start understanding about how you initiate the clinical trials program, the very first clinical trial, how do you actually calculate that first 
dose in humans and what kinds of studies you do in what is called early clinical pharmacology. So I teach some part of that, but I'm aided greatly in that effort by Dr. Uh, Brenna Carey, Dr. Funmi Ajayi, and, and many others uh, who will take the students all the way from the first uh, clinical trial all the way to phase three and phase four, which is where Dr. Uh, Jeff Goh's expertise in, in trying to ident identify uh, compounds that, that may cause a lot of uh, harm, safety issues, especially in larger population when he starts to do epidemiological risk assessments from things like cardiotoxicity to neurotoxicity, liver toxicity. Um, and all of this obviously is, is really things that we need to do with regards to uh, showing that what we are, the effect of the drug is actually something that is statistically significant. So the number of subjects that you enroll in the trial and the statistical analysis, uh, that's fairly complicated. It's really what is uh, being taught in the program by Dr. Cindy Rodenberg. So that's the curriculum that really spans the multidisciplinary aspect of drug development. And we try to capture all of that within our curriculum. Uh, so as I mentioned, our, our, our program really spans a, a course a sequence that really follows this sequence of drug development process. And so what we have been able to do is assemble a great degree of expertise. Uh, most of the course directors are present here today and they'll be talking more about their uh, particular expertise. But let me also add that there are multiple other avenues, uh, aspects of this that we that we cover in the course, for example, intellectual property issues, uh, human subjects protection. So the ethics in human research, which obviously is a very critical issue. Uh, how do you protect the, the, the volunteers, the subjects who participate and make it possible for us to actually develop new drugs? Uh, so we bring in 20, 25 other experts globally, uh, actually all the way from you know places like San Francisco, Boston to Amsterdam to to China and India. So it is a global effort, uh, drug development, uh, you know, so their involvement actually emphasizes that global aspect. Um, so the first year curriculum, the first four courses that really goes into the global regulatory issues discovery of drugs and therapeutics, as well as the, uh, the preclinical drug development process that I talked about. Product development, so these are four courses that individuals can take, and if they don't want to do the full-blown master's program, they can do those four courses and earn a graduate certificate in global regulatory affairs. Uh, or individuals who just want to focus on the clinical aspects would take courses in the phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, clinical trials courses, as well as the statistical principles in clinical trials and pharmacoeconomics. Uh, and those four courses will uh, uh, make them eligible to earn a graduate certificate in clinical trials, design and research. Of course, we hope that most of the students are going to aspire for a master's degree and we, we have a requirement for doing independent projects called capstone projects that would allow them to then hone in some of the skills on, on a specific topic. So that makes it a total of 30 credits, which is what the master's program requirements for our university are. Uh, so that really is the background of, of what, how we started the program and, and where we are today and the kinds of courses that we teach. Once again, it sort of really goes along the the, the sequence of drug discovery and drug development process and the expertise that we have uh, brought here is uh, is really represents that, that multifaceted process and, and uh, uh, you know the expertise that is needed to to make to take the drug from concept to the patient's bedside. Uh, 